Hey, uh, so my name is Adam Shaw. I'm an iOS app developer, and this is my talk, Designing Opinionated Apps. Uh, a little bit about my background. I have been uh, releasing apps in the App Store since the very beginning of the App Store, back in 2008. My first app was a note-taking app called NoteMaster. Um, I'll be honest, uh, when I first started writing NoteMaster, I didn't really know what I was doing. I mean, I knew how to develop apps, and I knew, I knew kind of what I wanted the app to do, and I sort of had a vague vision for it, but, you know, I just knew I need a note-taking app, and I want some features, and I'm going to develop it and put it out there. Uh, but over time, as I developed more and more apps, and as I continued to develop NoteMaster, and as I got a lot of feedback from my customers, I started thinking more about, you know, kind of the core vision of my apps. Like, what, is, what are these apps' core purpose? And thinking a lot more about who's using the apps and how they're using them. And I started to develop stronger opinions about the best ways that my apps should, uh, you know, solve user problems. And as my apps became more opinionated, uh, I feel like they became much better apps. And so today we're going to talk about opinionated apps. We're going to talk about how uh, opinionated apps, opinionated, I'm going to have trouble saying that, opinionated apps, um, you know, are, are better apps. And I'm going to kind of share my own personal journey uh, towards uh, making my own apps uh, more opinionated apps. So, I've been using this word opinionated apps a lot. Let's talk about what I mean by that. Unfortunately, there's no official definition for this. Um, but in my mind, uh, there's a few things that opinionated apps you know, have. Um, one is that they have a vision, or at least the developer creating them has a vision. You, know, you sort of know the, the core essence of what the app is supposed to be and what it's supposed to do and who it's for and how you expect a person to use it. Second, opinionated apps tend to be polarizing. Um, an opinionated app might have a very strong opinion about how something should be done in the app. And of course, some people, that's, it's going to resonate with some people, and some people are going to not like the way the app does that. And thirdly, um, you've heard this, like, pick one thing and do it well. Well, opinionated apps, maybe not one thing, a few things, a general area of things. I hate saying one thing. Um, but they tend to be ones that are more focused on uh, maybe a more limited... Uh, a limited use cases, let's say, if not limited features, uh, but they do those, those limited features very, very, very well. So uh, this is a quote from uh, the developers at 37 Signals, who are now called Basecamp, the makers of the web app Basecamp, uh, from a blog post about opinionated software. Uh, this is an excerpt. They write, the best software has a vision. The best software takes sides. When someone uses software, they're not just looking for features, they're looking for an approach. Uh, they're looking for a vision. Decide what your vision is and run with it. So I found this very inspiring. Um, but I want to show you an example of, of an app that I think is a really good example of an opinionated app. It's one that maybe you're familiar with. Um, it's called Clear by Real Max Software. I have no affiliation with Clear. I just love the app and I, I use it for a lot of things. Um, Clear is a to-do list app. And uh, I think it's a really good example because it's opinionated in a lot of different ways. It has a very unique visual style. You know, you can tell right away. Um, most to-do list apps, like they're kind of a table view of a bunch of white boxes with a little check box next to everything, and, that, and that's fine. But Clear obviously has a very, uh, is very opinionated about a visual style. It has this gradient with really bright, bold colors that kind of go from this red to, to yellow. It's very opinionated about how you interact with it. Uh, when you want to mark things as done, um, it's gesture-based. You do these little uh, swipes. Uh, when you want to add a new item, you pull down from the top. When you want to add a new item in the middle, it's uh, a little pinch gesture. Uh, so it's uh, almost completely based on, on gestures, and that's the way they, they design the app. One of the things that's missing from the interface you might expect normally in a to-do list app, there's no... There's no plus button in the upper right corner. There's no add button, right? Everything is, is very gesture-based. Additionally, it's kind of opinionated about its, its general feel and vibe. It's very whimsical. Uh, one of the things that I didn't show you when I was checking off items before is that it does these little chimes. And it's not just a, any old chime. It's this series of, of uh, increasing in, in audio frequency chimes uh, as you continue to check things off. It's uh, when you have an empty list, 
Instead of just having a normal empty list uh, uh, message, there's a little inspirational quote. And it has a set of themes, different color schemes, uh, some of which you have to unlock by doing certain things like going through tutorials. And finally, um, its feature set is very opinionated. Um, in fact, I've shown you almost all the features right now. Um, it's really just create lists, add things to lists, check things off lists. There's no uh, adding attachments to items in your lists or tag, adding tags to your lists or doing some sort of advanced searching of your lists. It's just you know, very simple and very straightforward. Um, I use it for things like uh, shopping lists for when I'm making tacos. Um, but I don't use this for all my to-do stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's perfect for certain kinds of applications for me, but I use other to-do apps for, you know, for other needs, and, and that's totally fine. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit, talk a little bit about how, you know, what we can do to make our own apps more opinionated. Well, obviously, you know, have a vision, you know, start with a vision. And that's kind of maybe a little vague and wishy-washy. What do I mean by that? Well, you really should kind of know what the core purpose of, of your app is, you know, and, you know, and also who it's for, who's using it. And the answer to the second question, who's using this app, shouldn't be everyone, right? Because guess what? Everyone's not going to use your app no matter what. You can, you can want it to be for everyone, but it isn't going to be. And uh, the way I try to answer this question is I, I actually try to create the kind of a mental model of the person who's using my app. I think, okay, you know, what, what do they do when they first wake up in the morning? What are they doing throughout the day? What is it that causes them to want to take out their phone and tap on my app? Uh, what is it that happened during their day that made that happen? And uh, what are they trying to accomplish when they use my app? And how should they feel when, you know, when they're done using the app? Um, Secondly, we can uh, not be afraid of being a little bit polarizing. Uh, we talked in the last slide about identifying who's using your app. I think it's really important to identify who's not using your app, which we don't normally think about. But you know, take the, the Clear app, for example. It's a list. Could you use it for bug tracking? I guess, but really you shouldn't. It's totally not for that. And so by identifying kind of the use cases that you absolutely don't care about, you can kind of push aside a whole set of features that you don't have to ever really think about. Um, related to this also is eliminating options. Um, I said eliminating options instead of eliminating settings. I know there's this trend towards, you know, no settings, you know, as few settings as possible. And that's part of it, but um, I use the term options to describe the more generic case, right? Uh, your app Maybe you want to do something in the app, and maybe you think, well, some people might want to do it this way, and some people might want to do it this way. But if, in your opinion, the best way is this way, maybe just, maybe just implement that way, and don't worry about the other case. And uh, you kind of need to be fearless to do this. It's scary. You know, making decisions and having opinions that you know will make your app less attractive to a whole bunch of people, you know, that, can be, that can be scary to, to, to be that polarizing. Uh, next, be amazing at the core purpose of your app. This is a, a rewording of the previous thing where I said pick one thing and do it well. Uh, it's not enough to merely have a vision and say, oh, I'm just going to focus on these core features. You know, the core features that you have need to be awesome. They need to be great. They need to be amazing. They need to be easy to use. They need to be as frictionless as possible. Uh, and this will really delight your users. In fact, I think if you really nail this, uh, People will love your app, and they won't even be able to necessarily articulate why. It's you know, just this, wow, it's like this app just gets me. It just gets how I think, you know, and that's, that's really powerful. Well, we've talked about how we can make our apps opinionated, but maybe the question is why? You know, what do we get out of it? What's, what's, what's the value in that? So let's talk about the benefits. Um, throughout this section, I'm going to you know, talk about some of the things that I personally learned about um, the benefits uh, through, through my own apps. And specifically, I'm going to talk about my app, Notemaster. Um, not because I'm trying to you know, uh, you know, promote it, but actually, it's, it's my earliest app, and I've learned the most through ongoing development of Notemaster. Um, just to let you see, you know, when I first launched Notemaster, this is what it looked like. You know, very familiar, old, old uh, iOS 2.0 look. Um, this is what it looks like today. But it's, it's, fundamental, it's fundamental vision. My fundamental vision for the app hasn't really changed, even though maybe initially I did, wasn't quite sure what that vision was. 
So uh, one of the whole areas of benefit, which you might not think about normally as developers, is marketing, actually. I think it's easier to mark, market a more opinionated app. Uh, when you're creating an app with a strong vision, you've already had to think about who is this app for and what are people doing with it and why. And, and really, those are all the questions you have to ask yourself when you're talking about marketing. And when I say marketing, I'm not talking about um, just press releases and websites. I'm talking about the core of what marketing is, which is like identifying your market and figuring out the best way to, to message to those people. Um, an example with Notemaster, you know, when I created it, when I was first developing it before I released it, this question, what is a notes app? I never asked that question. To me, it, I, it didn't occur to me that there might be multiple answers to that. In my mind, I was thinking of it as quick mobile notes, right? The iPhone was pretty new. People could do more complicated notes on their computer, but if you're doing it on your phone, I just imagine someone, you know, taking out your phone, jotting down some information real quick, putting it back in your pocket. So quick mo mobile notes was kind of my, my initial vision, um, but after I talked to more and more customers, it turned out that people were using it for all different things. Some people wanted it to be for uh, meeting notes, like actually taking notes during a meeting. Some people wanted to use it as a general information repository, throw in PDFs and videos and text from all over. Some people wanted to use it as a personal journal, like a daily journal. Some people wanted to use it as kind of a way of jotting down reminders and things. And uh, you know, this, this was very surprising to me. And uh, in fact, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to make an app that is all things to all people. And so in, in this case, uh, a few years later, I decided to actually make a separate app, which, is, that it was, which was a personal journal app called Journaling. Um, instead of trying to make Notemaster into that uh, and, and make it awesome for that use case, I decided to just make a completely separate app so I could market the different use cases uh, as separate apps. Related to this, um, it's easier to explain when you have a strong vision. It's easier to explain what the app is. Um, back to this, um, even for the same app, if I were to try to uh, market it to people that wanted a personal journal versus people that wanted meeting or lecture notes, I would probably use very different uh, messaging, different, different language. I would probably explain it in different ways. And so sort of knowing what your, what your vision is for the app helps you figure out the best way to explain what the app does and, and why you should want to use it. Um, we talked about this a little bit. You know, the, the, the people who are the target market, the people who, uh, whose vision matches your own, they will love your app and they will be, you know, champions for your app and that makes it <laughs> a little easier to market. Um, here I'm bragging a little bit needlessly, um, but I do get emails and people do love, you know, Notemaster. They say nice things about it. These are some emails I got, or the first sentence from emails for the past uh, few months. And finally, um, this is one that a lot of people don't think about. It's kind of easier to enter an existing market if your app is opinionated. I mean, think about the Clear app. It, it came out several years after the App Store launched, and there were hundreds, if not thousands, of to-do list apps, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of scary. But they, uh, they got a lot of attention, and it resonated with a lot of people. They got a lot of sales because they had this really um, you know, bold, strong, opinionated uh, way of doing uh, to-do lists. Another one I thought of is uh, Sketch. For those that don't know, Sketch is a, like a vector illustration tool. It's used a lot by... Um, uh, user interface designers. Uh, prior to Sketch, you know, everyone was using Photoshop and it's, you know, entering a market competing against an established player like Photoshop, you know, how do you do that? Well, Sketch, you know, even though it's a productivity tool and even though it has a ton of features, I, th I think it is opinionated. Um, they really focused on this, this use case of uh, user interface design and they were able to get a lot of the market that way. Well, the benefits aren't just marketing related. They are, there are benefits to the actual design and development of the app. If you have a strong vision for your app, deciding what goes in your minimum viable product, MVP, for those that don't know, that's a term to sort of describe, you know, the idea that your version 1.0 should be this, you know, very um, minimum version of your app that you can get away with. And I've seen people struggle with <coughs> figuring out what should be, what features should be in your minimum viable product. And if you have a really strong vision for your app, the, it's, easy, it's an easier question to answer. Uh, we talked about focus on one thing and do it well. Um, 
having a strong vision for your app helps you um, kind of with that do it well part, at least um, it has for me. I'll give you an example, um, back to Notemaster. Again, the vision is quick mobile notes, um, but one of the main features of Notemaster is the ability to have uh, notes that aren't just plain text. You know, you have these bold headings and images and things. Um, but I didn't want people to have to, you know, spend a lot of time to do that. So um, it, it, it helped me decide that the way to do that is to have, you know, a simple one-tap way of adding each of these things. And it would always be on the toolbar no matter what. And so everything was one tap away. I didn't want people to mess with menus and submenus. I didn't want people to mess with style sheets or have to go and select text and the little menu pops up and you choose bold. It's like quick mobile notes. No one has time for that. You know, one tap, add a header, one tap, add a list, one tap, add a, add a photo. Um, I think having a strong vision helps you eliminate distractions, and I'm not talking about getting unwanted phone calls in the middle of the day, not that kind of distraction, more about distractions that maybe uh, take you away from the, the core focus of, of what you should be doing with your app. Um, early on with Notemaster, I added this feature to sync notes with Google Drive. Um, this, was, this was not really part of the core vision of the app, but I felt like I needed some sort of syncing solution. This was before iCloud, and I didn't want to write my own syncing server, and so syncing with Google Drive made sense. And it turns out people really like this feature a lot. I actually got a lot of new sales because of it. But what I found out from these new customers was they were actually buying the app because they were not looking for a note-taking app solution. They were looking for a Google Drive solution. And whereas I thought of it as, here's the note-taking app, and oh yeah, it syncs with Google Drive, some of these new customers were thinking of it as, it's a Google Drive app. And they, they want the, all their feature requests were around new features for Google Drive. And dealing with that itself was a distraction, but also, you know, it was a little tempting. I actually considered, you know, maybe this should be the, my niche. Maybe I should move Notemaster and turn it into this kind of app. But ultimately, I decided that that would be a distraction. Um, but I did decide to make a separate app that was focused on Google Drive. So um, even when uh, you, know, you stick to your vision, you can still use some of this information to, to you know, build other apps. <coughs> I think that having a strong vision helps you prioritize new features and helps you figure out how you should grow your app. Maybe you know what features you want in the future, but you're not sure what order you should do them in. Ideally, you know, you would start with some core set of features that really closely aligns with your initial strong vision. And you kind of add new features in a way that just sort of expands the circle, right? And, and uh, as opposed to just dropping down, you know, features like, you know, in some random order. Uh, you know, this might, be, this might represent two apps that look like they kind of have the same feature set. But users can tell when it looks like someone just threw a bunch of features against the wall versus an app that, you know, kind of started with a, a core vision. There are some dangers I found in uh, having opinionated apps. Uh, one of them is related to completing your vision. Um, we talked about having this strong vision based around maybe a, a couple core features. Well, what happens after a couple years when you've achieved that? You know, what do you do when you're done? Uh, how do you grow your app? It can be difficult because maybe you all the directions you think about growing your app might make it, it might feel like you're being pulled away from that core vision. So it can be a challenge. Um, feature checklists do still drive app sales. As much as I've been claiming, you know, that user, users do resonate with, um, you know, maybe a more concise feature list implemented really well, but it still can be a marketing problem. People still do look at number of bullet points in the app store description. And um, I found Sometimes it can be an easy excuse for your limited feature set uh, that you have a, a strong vision. I get, maybe I'll have a lot of customers asking for a particular feature, and it's very easy for me to say, uh, you know, <clears throat> that is not part of my vision, I'm sorry. You know, I don't say that to them, but that's sort of how I think. And I have to catch myself, I have to ask myself, is that really true, or am I just sort of making, it, making an excuse not to, not to add that feature? And, um, it can be hard to explain to customers why you don't want to add their feature. You know, I, I've gotten customers where they're trying to use Notemaster for some 
very odd purpose, and I, it, you can't write back, you know, you're using it wrong, um, even though that's what I'm thinking. Uh, so, you know, customers don't, don't like to hear that their, that their feature request isn't part of your core vision. That, that, doesn't, that does not resonate with them, so that can be a challenge. Remember I showed you these, these glowing, um, you know, love for Notemaster emails. Well, I, I was kind of, I was kind of, I'm kind of tricking you because this is actually just the first sentence of each email. The, uh, the second sentence is almost always a, uh, a feature request and it's not always a feature that is a really good match for what I'm trying to do. So, uh, yeah. I encourage everyone to try to go out and make your apps more opinionated. I think it'll make your apps better. Maybe you're not making something quite as strongly opinionated as like the clear app, but I think the, the same, uh, the, the, the approaches will make your apps better to whatever degree you take them. Um, let's uh, make our apps more opinionated. Let's not be afraid of being polarizing, even though it's scary. Let's make sure that the features that we do put in our apps are amazing. And finally, let's, let's be fearless. It can be really, really scary. I've been using this term opinionated apps, but really apps have no opinion. Uh, have no opinion. It's us that have the opinion, right? And we put our opinions in the apps and then we put our apps out in the world and we're really putting ourselves out in the world. And that can be really scary, but um, I, think it's, I think it allows us to make better apps and I think it's worth it. So thank you very much. Okay, I, there are apparently five minutes left, so I'm happy to take questions. Hello? Um, so we've got a sort of three-sided marketplace, and we have two sets of customers. One is people who are buying art, the other is sexual arts. And we get a hell of a lot of requests from artists who are being able to use our app to up upload art. That's not something that we're focusing on. Okay. Do you recommend creating a separate app for that? Um, the question is, I mean, just to summarize, he has an art app and he's getting feature requests that um, maybe aren't aligned with what you think the app is supposed to be doing at its core. Um, you know, you, ha you have to kind of use your own judgment. If, if, if you feel like adding a new feature is going to really be a distraction, if you feel like it might take you in a direction that's going to lead to more feature requests, re feature requests that are going to take you farther and farther away, um, you know, uh, that would be the danger. I think that um, you know having a separate app can be nice because you can kind of test and see if that seems to work. And if if it if it does, great. If it doesn't, then maybe you've already written the code. You can kind of move it back into the main app. But uh, there's probably no definite answer. You you kind of have to go by gut feel of whether you feel like adding a feature would you know take you in the wrong direction. I guess. Yes. Hi. So, Adam, I've often got ideas for these apps, and I often just get held up because I'm just shit at doing the design for them. And okay. I just get held back. Have you done all the design for yours yourself, or do you reach out and you know hire a designer <coughs> to help you with? Uh, for my own apps, uh, most of them are uh, self-designed and redesigned and redesigned and redesigned as I get better at it. Um, but I, I have lots of uh, developer and designer friends that I get a lot of uh, advice from. And I think uh, if, you're, if you're talking about design in terms of visual design, that's, that's one thing you kind of, that that's kind of a, a skill. Uh, if you're talking about just general app design, that's the kind of thing that if you, if you care and you do it enough, you just kind of get better at it. But um, if, if, if you're not good at it and you don't want to become good at it, then I think it's worth getting a professional designer involved. Yeah. Anything else? Tim? Have you found any tricks or processes that you use to determine what your core focus is? Because getting all these feature requests, how do you sit and consider what is your core focus and why for your yeah. example is Google Drive, why you might not go down that path? What's, what's your personal process to refine yeah. The question is what's my personal process to refine determining what the core focus of my apps are? Uh, I don't know if I have a, a specific recipe. I can tell you uh, for Notemaster, I, I, I refined that by 
getting a lot of customer feedback for features that I knew I didn't want to add and I was trying to articulate why and and I was actually in some ways surprised like oh users want they're trying to make the app this thing why why would you want to do that and kind of realizing like okay that's fine but every time that happened it would so more solidify the fact that like no no it's not that it's this um, and for newer apps I, I've just tried to maybe knowing that that can happen I've tried to anticipate uh, the other uses that people might want the app to be that I don't want it to be and um, you know it's again it's like knowing who the app isn't for and sort of that can help you anticipate so those are those are kind of some of the methods I've used is there oh Yeah. Um, where do you personally land on the spectrum of make the core proposition of your app mirror the core proposition of your web app or mobile web uh, versus make your app uh, to make it opinionated completely different and go yeah, in yeah. a different direction? Well, and of course, uh, so the question is if, if a web app and you're building a, a native app to kind of be the equivalent of the web app, how do you, um, to what degree do you try to make the, the native app mimic the web app versus making it its own strongly opinionated thing? Well, of course, web apps can be strongly opinionated also, and hopefully someone at the company has, has a more like, grand vision for all the things. Um, but, uh, you know, mo most of the stuff I've done is, is more of the, like, it's just me, so it's a, it's a little easier. Um, I think part of the answer would be it depends on whether at that company, it's a, it's a web app and oh yeah, we also have an iOS app, which sometimes happens, or whether it's the main product is the iOS app and oh yeah, we also have a web app, or maybe, maybe they're both equally important. I don't know. I, I know that you know, at big companies, you do, you do want, uh, especially the look and feel, to have consistent branding, so I think you probably couldn't move too far away from that. Um, but if there was something, I guess, specific to the iOS app that, that made sense specific to it being a mobile app, you could, I don't know, I don't know, kind of have a, a little mini vision around that. I know I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't have a specific uh, great answer for that, but those are the kind of things that I, I think about. Is that one last question? Yes, sir. Yeah, I have a question. Um, so you start with a vision, but how does that, how do you make that vision how do you make your vision go from your own vision to well yeah. well so uh, I mean sure 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 yeah because I, I could have a strong opinion about how my app should yeah. work and it could be the case that I'm the only person <laughs> in the app store market who, who thinks that way um, you know, usually that's not the case. Usually the reason you have a strong opinion is maybe you're building an app because you're rejecting other apps and you can kind of assume that if you're unhappy with certain aspects of other apps and you're building an app to do things a better way that other people will feel the same way, um, certainly there's ways you can, you know, do, uh, you know, uh, validation of your app idea before you even get started. Um, uh, you know, I start with just sort of asking people I trust, people I've worked with, you know, just to, for general validation. But you can, uh, you can expand that to a larger public maybe in, in some way. But um, at some point, you just have to believe in it and go for it, I think. Uh, okay, I think that's, that's all we have time for. But right. Thanks again. Thank you so much.